Simply Cooking by Umchef is brought to you in part by CPI Interiors. A great kitchen starts with a great design. Get that custom home interior you dream of. At CPI Interiors, we listen and beautiful happens. Hi, welcome to Simply Cooking by Umchef. I'm Daniela Croco and I'm a holistic chef. I take traditional classic recipes and turn them into nutrient dense, delicious, simple eats. Do you ever get bored of eating the same flavor over and over? Chicken, rice, salt and pepper, salmon, rice, salt and pepper. Well, eating exciting, delicious flavors doesn't have to be boring. I'm gonna show you how. Do you ever feel like cooking something different every night of the week is way too time consuming? Well, I'm going to show you how you can take just a couple hours out of your week and create a different flavor and a different cuisine from the same ingredients four nights a week. I'm going to do a sheet pan dinner. I've got some proteins in the fridge that I'm going to take out and get ready on my pan so that I can cook those. I've got some rice on the stove getting nice and hot and warm and cooking for me and then I'm going to show you how to make four different sauces so that your dinner can be a different flavor every night of the week. I've got some organic chicken and wild caught salmon. Some sprouted tofu and some grass fed beef. Cooking different flavors doesn't have to be complicated. And cooking multiple meals at the same time also doesn't have to be complicated. I'm very busy from Tuesdays to Fridays, so I like to take a couple of hours at the beginning of my week to create meals that I can just have ready to go at the end of a busy day. But I don't know what flavors I want to eat, and I don't know what I'm going to feel like on Thursday night. So that's why I cook the proteins, the grain, and maybe a veg, and then I make the sauces on the side so that when I go to eat them, I get to choose what flavor I want to eat. I've set up this sheet pan with a piece of parchment. And I've set up a smaller sheet pan also with a piece of parchment because I don't want my chicken to touch anything else and the juices will run all over my pan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my tofu. I'm going to slice this into four lovely pieces. The idea is that I'm going to actually have eight meals here because my husband and I are two. So we're going to do four meals for each of us, which is eight for both of us. I'm going to lay my tofu out on my pan. Next to the tofu, I'm going to put the salmon. As you notice, my salmon is frozen that's okay. You can cook your salmon right from frozen. It will cook the fastest out of everything here. And the whole point is to have everything cooking for the same amount of time. So having the salmon a little bit frozen will actually bring it up to the same temperature as the chicken and the beef so that it all cooks together. I'm using ground beef today. You can use ground chicken, ground turkey, you can use tempeh if you don't eat animal products. Um, and I'm deciding to form my beef into little patties. But of course, you could form it into like a little meatloaf, you could form it into little mini meatballs, or if you have the extra time, you could saute it up in a frying pan and crumble it into lots of little different pieces, and then you can add the flavor to that. But just for convenience sake, I'm doing it all on one pan. Just gonna give my hands a quick rinse. And that's why I have this separate pan here. Just because raw chicken is a little bit different than the other ingredients and we don't want them to touch each other. So I've got my chicken on my pan here. Same thing, just gonna give my hands a quick rinse. All right. Now I'm only gonna season this protein with salt. I'm gonna add the actual flavors to the sauces later. So I'm just gonna season it with salt and get them into the oven. I've got my oven set at 400, ready to go, and all of my meats are gonna cook at the same time. I'm not gonna add any fat to any of my proteins except for the tofu. Now the tofu, because it's made out of soybeans, 
it doesn't really have any fat and we want to give it that yummy full mouth flavor. So I'm just going to drizzle some olive oil on my tofu and I'm going to flip it over and get it on both sides. And a little bit more salt on the other side as well. My oven is preheated and I'm going to get these in there. Now that my protein is cooking and I've got my rice on the stove getting nice and fluffy, I'm going to clean up and get all of my ingredients ready to create the four sauces. See you after the break. This program is brought to you in part by CPI Interiors, designing customized home spaces for all tastes and budgets for over 20 years. At CPI Interiors, we listen and beautiful happens. Now I've got all my protein in the oven cooking and my rice is almost done and I've got all of my ingredients ready to go to create these four different sauces. We're going to be working on an Italian Mediterranean style sauce, an Asian style sauce, a Mexican style sauce and a twist on a Caribbean slash Indian style sauce. What's interesting is that even though they'll have four different complete opposite flavors, they actually have some similar ingredients. So let me show you. I've got my pre-chopped garlic that I love to have ready to go in the fridge. And I'm actually going to add garlic to every one of them. Garlic in my Italian, garlic in my Asian, garlic in my Caribbean, whoops, and garlic in my Mexican. Never have too much garlic. Got to keep those vampires away. And then I have some white onion and some red onion. Now the red onion is going to go really well in my Mexican. And it's also going to go really well in the Caribbean. Oh, that garlic is so, so fragrant. Excellent. So now I'm going to work on these two. I've got my Italian is the first one. I've got this beautiful, delicious fresh rosemary. There's nothing like fresh herbs. And I'm going to give these a tear off the stick. And I'm also going to give them a quick chop. Now you're wondering which one goes best with what meat? Doesn't matter. Every flavor will go well with any of the meats and the proteins like the tofu that we put in the oven. I chose to use rice today because I thought it would be neat to show how even though we have four different cuisines, rice is something that is, is used in almost every cuisine. So we can see how simple ingredients can be made completely different just by changing up the sauce or the flavor. I've got my chopped rosemary that's going into my Mediterranean slash Italian style. And then I've got this beautiful cilantro. The cilantro is not only going to go in my Mexican one but it's also going to go in the Caribbean one. I'm just going to tear a little bit of this off here. And give this also a nice little chop. I love cilantro. To me, it tastes so clean and so fresh. But not everyone likes cilantro. Some of you think it tastes like soap. I don't know or understand but I do know that you really don't like it. So if you don't like cilantro, don't worry about it. Just leave it out or add another fresh herb that you might enjoy more. 
I'm adding a little handful to both my Caribbean style one and to my Mexican style one. Got a little bit too much cilantro. I'll just leave that to the side. I don't waste anything. So even though I'm not gonna use all the cilantro, after when I clean up, I'm gonna put it in a jar to use for later on. All right, next we have olive oil. I'm gonna use olive oil in three out of my four sauces. So olive oil in my Italian Mediterranean style. Olive oil in my Mexican style. And a little bit of olive oil also in the Caribbean style. For the Asian style, I'm gonna use sesame oil toasted sesame oil. It has such a delicious and deep smell, which reflects also in the flavor. Oh, you know what? Cilantro also goes really well with Asian flavors. I hadn't thought of that earlier, but you know what? I think I'm going to use this extra cilantro in the Asian one as well. Now again, if you don't like cilantro, you don't have to use cilantro. You can use parsley, basil, or you can leave the herb out completely. Excellent. Now I have lemon. The lemon juice is going to go a little squeeze into my Italian Mediterranean style one. Garlic, rosemary, lemon, those are classic flavors together. I want to make sure I don't get those seeds in there. Then I'm also going to add a little bit of lemon to the Mexican one. Oh, we got a seed in there. I'm going to have to fish those out. No one's going to want to eat a seed in their dressing. There we go, we'll put these to the side. Then I have a lime. Did you know that if you use a lime that doesn't have a little butt on each side, that it actually holds so much more juice? And the ones that are kind of pointy like a lemon, they're actually much drier inside. So when I'm grocery shopping, I'm always looking for a perfectly round lime so I can get the most juice possible out of it. Now the lime juice is going to go really, really well in my Caribbean style. And it's also going to go really well into the Asian style. Excellent. Now I'm going to chop these tomatoes. The tomatoes are only going to go into the Mexican style one. I'm doing kind of like a little play on salsa, but a little bit more runnier so that my rice can soak up the delicious flavor. I like to use these little tomatoes, but you can use whatever tomatoes you want. If you don't have any fresh tomatoes on hand, that's okay. You can even use a can of chopped or diced tomatoes, or even a little bit of tomato sauce that you might have the end of a jar of in the back of your fridge. Actually, you know what? I don't think I need this last tomato. This is all going to fit inside that jar perfectly. All right. Look at that. Now the Mexican one is almost done. What's left to do for that one? I have this delicious chili powder here, which is a traditional Mexican flavor. I'm gonna add a little bit of that to the top. Now you can also add coriander or cumin powder or even a pre-made taco seasoning mix. Really whatever you have on hand, but I always have chili powder. I'm gonna put the lid on that one. How I'm gonna mix them all at the end is I'm gonna give them all a really good shake. Next, I'm going to go back to my Caribbean style slash Indian style one. And the reason that I say that it's slash is because even though Caribbean food and Indian food are so far away from each other on the planet, they actually have so many similar ingredients. I'm going to use this full fat coconut cream and I'm going to add it to that. Yum. And then I have this curry powder. This curry powder is a Jamaican curry powder that I brought back from Jamaica, but you can use an Indian curry powder or you could even use a curry paste. A lot of people have a jar of curry paste sitting in their fridge all the time. So you can use green curry paste or red curry paste. It's really whatever flavor you like. We're not a very spicy household, so I don't use the spicy curry pastes. All right. Then we have our Asian one. It's next. I've got the sesame oil, the um, cilantro, the lime juice, and now I'm going to add a little tiny bit of mustard because I want it to all hold together when I shake it. 
Mustard's a great emulsifier, so it helps things to not separate when they're sitting. And then I'm going to add this tamari. Tamari is a gluten-free soy sauce, but you can use any type of soy sauce, or if you don't eat soy, or stay away, with, stay away sorry, from soy products, you can use something called coconut aminos, or you can leave it out altogether, or use maple syrup, or even a little bit of balsamic. Um, there's really endless possibilities, but I really like the flavor of the soy. Then in my Italian one, I've got balsamic. Balsamic, garlic, rosemary, olive oil. And this one I also want to be able to emulsify when I shake it up. So I'm also going to add some mustard to that. All right. Wrong lid. Wrong spot. Haha. -ha. All right. So here we go. As you can see, we've got all these similar ingredients, and some of these jars have the same ingredients inside of them, but they all produce different flavors. Now I'm going to give them all a really good shake. My Italian one is all emulsified and ready to go. And look at that. Nice and creamy. Asian one is ready to go. And our Mexican salsa E1 is ready to go. Now that I've got all four of my sauces ready, and it looks like my rice is cooked, I'm going to clean up my board so that I can make room for the proteins that I'm taking out of the oven in a few minutes. We'll see you after the break. I've cleaned up my settings and I've got my containers and plates ready for dinner tonight. My rice is perfectly cooked and nice and fluffy. And I've got all four of my sauces here ready to go. I'm going to pull my protein out of the oven because I think it is cooked. Oh yes. We've got our chicken. It is ready to go. And we've got our beef salmon and tofu. Look at that. Look at that sizzle. Well, that cools a little bit so I don't burn myself, I'm going to portion this rice out into these containers. Tonight we're going to have dinner on these two plates and then I'm going to have our dinner ready for the next three nights. Tonight I think I'm going to go with Asian. Wonder what my hubby Wendell's gonna wanna have on his. Perfect. I cooked just the perfect amount of rice. Rice overboard. That's all right. Excellent. Now, I think for dinner tonight, I'm going to have a piece of salmon. And Wendell's favorite thing is beef, so I'm going to plate that for us. A nice little piece of the salmon for me. And a little beef patty for Wendell. Oh, I almost forgot the green. We cannot forget green. I've always got a green vegetable on hand in the freezer. I also have vegetables on hand um, in the fridge and in my deep freezer in the basement, but I love to use spinach because it adds such great nutrition and it pretty much goes with everything. So I'm just going to add some spinach to the bottom of every one of my containers here. Then I'm going to put the protein on top so it'll capture that flavor. 
I'm just gonna put a little pile of spinach on my plate for dinner tonight. You can use frozen peas, you can use broccoli, you can use green beans, um, really anything. Cauliflower, don't have any fresh vegetables on hand, but you've got a can of peas or a can of corn, that would work really well as well. Excellent. All right, now I'm gonna portion out my protein for the next few nights. I think we'll do another salmon and beef in the same container. We'll eat that two days from now so that we're not eating the same protein two nights in a row. And I'm gonna eat the salmon tonight and Wendell's gonna eat the beef, but I'll switch it up and I'll eat the beef and he'll eat the salmon. Put all the chicken together in one container. Whoops, it's hot. Sometimes I say I'm a chef so I can't feel the heat anymore, but every once in a while it sneaks up on me. Then I've got this delicious tofu. Yum. All right. So tonight I'm going to eat the delicious Asian flavor. And I think for Wendell we're going to do Mexican because lime and cilantro go really well with both of those. And I've got some ready. Give it up a good shake. And look at that. Beef and rice and a Mexican salsa goes really, really well together. And not to forget the juice. So each one of these jars is good enough for two meals. I made four jars and there are eight meals. Look at that. A little bit of fresh cilantro on top and a nice squeeze of lime. That one's ready to go. And then we're going to do the Asian one. Is it this guy? Nope. This is the Italian one. I can see the pieces of rosemary inside. This is the Asian one. That's the one I'm looking for. Oh, yum. Look at that glaze. That looks great. And the rice is soaking in really nicely. Same thing, I've got some fresh cilantro here and a nice little bit of lime juice to give it a nice zing. Now who said that preparing a whole bunch of meals at once would be difficult and that you wouldn't be able to get the same deliciousness from different flavors and similar ingredients? I have created four separate meals with four completely different flavors in no time. It took me less than an hour to put this all together and now I have dinner for myself and my husband for the next four nights. Let me grab a fork. I can taste the garlic, the sesame oil, the lime, the cilantro. What a perfect balance. Don't tell Wendell, he's not here yet. I'm gonna taste his before he gets here. Oh, the chili powder, the green and red. Oh, just the delicious colors really, really speak to me in my mouth. It really doesn't have to be complicated when you wanna create different flavors with similar ingredients. That was so simple. See you next time. Mm -hmm.